Apparently, I, I'm like much more urgently in need of a new USB hub than I thought. But it just starts like five minutes before my stream starts. The issue becomes really pronounced. All day, no problem. My, my mouse is working fine. Plugged in through the USB hub, and now suddenly it starts. I just wanted to go on this rant. Like, chess is, is gymnastics about having fun? Dude, like, seriously? Maybe that's why, you know, people aren't, aren't really strong players. They're playing bullet chess, and they're not serious. If you want to have fun, you know, that's not anything to do with chess. Chess can be art. It can be sport. It can be a lot of things to different people. It's not just about having fun. So, whatever, you know? That was, like, offensive. I mean, I realized the guy's being a little bit... In a way, he was being a little bit, you know, and I get I get a grain of salt here, but this is a really big misconception. If you're Eric Rosen and you're teaching little kids about playing the London system, chess is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun so we can attract lots of little kids to get their parents to pay lots of money to sign up for lessons and stuff like that. That's about fun. Yeah, it's fun. Fun to pay, ch you know, but chess, real chess is not about having fun. It is a brutal th sport. It's about, it's about sadistically torturing your opponent. Yeah, no, I think he's half serious, but at the same time, I think he really believes that chess is about having fun, which is scary, you know. Do not mistake chess to be something about, you know, it's about having fun. It's about crushing your opponent's will to live. Or it's about art, but it's serious. It's not. It's not about fun. What a misconception. But you're not going to force fun on me, man. Like whatever. It can be what you want it to be, but it is not fun for me. You know. And if you want to be good at it, I don't think it's going to be fun. That's for sure. I mean, bullet is is maybe for fun. So we had a couple hiccups with the we had a couple hiccups with the um the USB hub. I didn't get around to getting a new USB hub. That's one of my problems. The easiest fix. Okay, Astrobate got the buy because I took a half point by myself. I like how this guy, this kid was like challenging me to 3-0. After he registered for the tournament, he started challenging me to 3-0. He's supposed to be like six years old, according to his profile. Now he's playing Aldis though. Why is he ranked like, what's up with the ranking there? Oh, he's playing the highest rated player, right? So Aldis though is next highest rated. Dude, I just don't want to, I want people to believe this. They put this guy up there so he can post a blog about how chess is fun. Chess is not mainly about fun. It was never fun. If it was fun, it would be easy, you know? Damn. What a misconception. Parcheesi is fun. You know, playing Monopoly is fun. Even Monopoly can be cutthroat, but chess is not about fun, man. If you want to play, have fun. There are plenty of things you can do. There's a million. Ulevi, you missed my rant. Do you feel that chess is about fun? Ulevi is a seriously motivated chess improver. I seriously very much doubt he thinks that chess is about fun. You might, Dr. Chip Chance. You just play chess to meet girls. Who does that? It's way, it's 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 like Dr. Chip Chance way to meet meet women through chess or something. All right, you're in the minority, man. But you do what you can do. Mr. Coffee donated a thousand bits. Sorry for the delayed reaction. Yeah, I didn't get to do the rant I really truly wanted to deliver there. It just hurts me very deeply when people say chess is about fun. You're mis misleading the entire chess community, the especially the new initiates to chess. Chess 
saying chess is is fun it just cheapens chess completely it's a marketing scam for for cheese.com to get more little kids to sign up it's fun mommy and daddy chess is fun can we play chess I want to sign up for cheese.com master master Bob says chess is fun do you know any like professional gymnasts who think like they're having fun while they're being tortured by their coaches or something? No. You think serious athletics and sports are fun? Chess is boring. Did I say that? You retired at age, age 18. Well, all right. N then once after your retirement, maybe it can be fun. But you're not playing chess anymore. You, you fully admit you're not playing chess anymore. Go live. What is that? All right. Anyway, welcome to the stream. Ponda 5 I had to take me a buy in the first round due to a computer problem. But it's no problem. There's 11. Yeah, Astro Bay posted my new quote. Top, we need to make like a David Letterman style like thing where it's like the top 10 list. Top 10 things. Top 10 signs you're not a serious chess player. You play bullet all day. I said that. Well, I always say like 99% of tactics don't work. I'm not sure if you're paraphrasing or was that my exact wording? All right, Alistair winning. He rushed it a little there. It's all good, man. He found a rookie two check. Nice move. But I think what I meant in that case was like, you know, it can't always be exciting. You know, you can't play for excitement in every game. Like your Mikhail Tal. Sometimes chess has to be boring. Winning, winning, you know, winning can be exciting. But there's nothing more satisfying than destroying your opponent's ego. All right, seriously, why am I looking at this game? First round, uh, we have just nine players. Why are there just nine players? There's a lot of people, maybe I need to update this. How many players do we really have? 15, all right. We really have 15 players. I got to me by, Camel Culture was lurking before, but he didn't enter. I think we need a new definition of fun, man. HTFP. Your definition of fun and my definition of fun are not the same thing. El Prepador. See, that's that's a big problem. Fun is a very, very vague word. Um, no, if I want to have fun, I'll, you know, go to a concert or something. What are we going to do, seriously? You're not going to find many serious chess players who say that chess is fun. My favorite quote, of course, Alexander Ivanov. If this is any indication, his favorite moment of the chess tournament is when he gets in his car and he drives home. That's not, you know, you're not having fun at that point. It's a work. It's your work, man. You may love it. It may be rewarding, but that still doesn't mean it's fun. Fun implies, like, sort of silly... And I don't know, kind of like a time waster. To me, at least. Lighthearted. Chess is not lighthearted. Not when you put as much as I put into it. But like, I devoted a huge chunk of my life to the game. 
All right. Serious discussions. No politics, just debating the relevance of the word fun. Barry Manilow, one of my favorites, my all-time favorite artists, Move 11. He's he's deep. See? That's what you get. You get Barry Manilow. Because Barry Manilow is very meaningful. He he would understand, right? Linda Ronstadt, like who else? I don't know, man. If you understand boring, you know, you probably have a good handle on fun. All right, El Prepador. We're playing round two. Remember, 5-0. No prisoners. The Vulture. Ah! Ah! That's more like a kind of crow sound. That was about, I don't know what vultures actually sound like. I think they have them here. Um, at the Budapest Zoo. Be the vulture. See, that's fun, right? We're having fun joking around, but this isn't a serious tournament. This is a little, this is a step above bullet chess, basically. Which isn't saying much. I just was messing around with the vulture and he's like he's turned into a pro on me anti vulture pro wow rook takes We gotta adjust this. All wars should be solved by chess matches. Single combat with Elon Musk. What an idiot. All right. Yeah, right. Like that's gonna happen. A noble idea, would you? What just happened? Whoa. I'm getting hijacked by my virus software. That's great. My, my browser is being hijacked by my own virus software. F you, Norton. Why do I have that shit? Seriously. Wow. Your own virus protection software hijacks your browser. Damn, dude. That's just brutal. While I'm trying to concentrate and do my work. I can't believe I still have Norton. <laughs> Don't even ask me. Well, basically all virus software is essentially a virus, right? I guess. Technically. Well, it's not as bad as, um, what's the other major virus software? What do you call it? McAfee? Oh my god. That's even worse.
Kaspersky, of course you would like Kaspersky. Don't even get me started. Are you one of the part owners of Arsenal? We're not going to start with the Russian stuff today. Hey, what happened? I saw you playing um, Move 11. Or are you guys not playing? Or are you playing now? No, I hate all white virus software. Essentially. Were you guys playing or not? We finished, you lost. You had more time and a totally good position. Classic Arsenal fan. You're trying to like flag him. You impressively like outplayed him in the opening. Move 11 knows a lot of theory, and you you easily got a good game there. I thought you're you you like equalized effortless, effortlessly, and you were probably better. What am I doing? I've got a move 11. You've got a move 11 game tonight too? Cheers everybody. Thanks Mr. Coffee for donating a thousand bits. To be honest, I had a, I had, I had uh, Kaspersky from, um, I had Kaspersky at one point because of Best Buy. I bought a computer there and it came with the computer. I didn't really like it. It was okay. So really, I, I don't think that there's any sense in you having it. It's just a habit, you know? For 20 years I had like virus software on my computer and I can't, I can't like break myself with a habit. I feel unsafe. It's all a scam. The Vulture. My last Vulture, this will be my last Vulture for a while. I just wanna let you guys know. is bishop f1 damn he actually played it so what's the deal here Wow, this is a weird position. I thought it was better to play king h2, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, bishop d4. What's wrong with bishop d4? Yeah. Let's just say it had a problem. What are you guys talking about? Queen takes c4. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> oh, he fell for it. Why not play the king h1, man? Is this even remotely sound? 
Alright, I was having fun. No more vultures. Man, the vulture is bad. The Al Alvales against Uber Driver is still going on. Dude, he had Rook takes G7. The problem was he had Rook takes G7 check. You guys. If I try to do Rook takes F2, he plays Rook. Rook takes G7 check. I mean, that's, that's kind of a problem. Having fun. Oh, shit. Having what? We're allowed to have fun, but this isn't real chess. This isn't real chess. We normally don't have fun here on the stream. I basically try to stay away from fun. Fun. It was... Fun. Anti-fun. The normal stream is anti-fun. We try to be serious about the game. We do anything but have fun. Sun death five zero. Yes, the F word. Sorry. I said thanks, Sister Coffee. You should take back your donation now. I said the F word. It's it's insipid. It's ins in no. It's um insidious. You busted me. Tier one thousand. Take back your tier one thousand. Said the F word. Streaming might be fun, but chess isn't fun. It's fun just hanging out with, with you guys and, and talking shit, you know. That's that's fun. You know, and that's that's normal and that's the way life's supposed to be. Hanging out with your friends and, and talking a lot of crap, you know. But serious chess is definitely not fun. Does Kramnik look fun? <laughs> For example? I don't know. Alright. You see, he had to retire. He, he needed some fun in his life. Some of the words I use is... Did I use some bad words? Oh no, world loser immediately. Alright, I'm just gonna play what I've been playing lately. Insidious, I meant to say, but I said the wrong word. Well, first of all, I said the wrong word. I said a word that sounded similar, but it was the wrong word. I meant to say insidious. Yeah, it's like kind of evil. But I said the wrong thing. I forget what I said now. Like Arsenal fan is insidious. There's more than one way to pronounce it. Insidious or insidious. Maybe there's not one. Maybe there's a British way to pronounce it. But it should be for right away. It's like a fake... A fake Cambridge Springs... Yeah, there was a horror movie, I think, with that title in the last 10 years. Now we're back into a real Cambridge Springs. Serendipitous. Saw that word recently. Why? Don't know that that word as well. Here we go, Aliakin Capablanca. Again. We had this the other day. Ooh, B five is not a typical idea here. That is really not, not common. Right, but whatever serendipity is. D 
dippity do. Sounds cheesy. Yippity dippity. Well, you got that? That's like the guy yesterday. Are you the secret guy from yesterday? He gets in C5 anyway. Exactly what happened yesterday. Unbelievable. Dude, you're just like him. This is so similar to what happened. I thought I had a good position and he just like wiggles out of it. Don't exacerbate. Don't acerbate the situation. Interesting. Cracky crab. The, the trick is not to try to commentate too much in the 5 0 games like I would if it was like a standard time control. We definitely don't want to do that. I have to say this guy is pretty impressive in his speed of play. Even scary. It's like self mate. Poo. Looks lost to me, man. I agree, Arsenal.
He just self made it himself. Welcome, everybody. Alright. Not sure who was better there, like, but he was better at some point, I think, for sure. Maybe a large point. Yeah, very combat combative. Combative! Combative! Combative. Uber Driver versus Autisto. Big matchup. World Loser, like, lives and dies by the sword. You know, he. He plays fast and, you know, he either works or it doesn't. And sometimes he just, like, blunders terribly in even good positions. But I think at that point it was getting... It was pretty interesting. I mean, I might have overtaken him strategically there. He should have fought for the G-File right away, was my thinking. Well, he played, he's the one that played F5. I mean, he didn't have to do that. He should have been better. Alistair in trouble. <laughs> Uber driver doesn't do a lot of tactics. Where are these pieces coming from? My God. White is down material here, are you sure? He has an awful lot of pieces in and about the area. My god. It's hard to believe white is down material. Uber driver's really bad with things like maiden one. Or winning, totally winning positions. He had like rookie one check, but it was covered, but it was covered by the queen two. So he had rookie one check. That's so sick, man. You do it every time, you like the jinx. Uber driver is the jinx. Rook e1 check, triple attacking e7. Well, you're certainly not losing. Phew, man, you could lose any position. I play booger badly. Welcome to Lady in Black. I didn't greet you. Um, who else was here? Oh, I play poker badly. Ridge shoot. Thanks everyone for joining us. I'm hosting a 5-0 tournament for something different. Um, chess is not normally about fun, and that's very important for my philosophy of the game. Um, but this this is the closest thing to fun that we have here on my stream as far as tournaments go. 5-0. It's not real chess. It's just a step above 3-0, which is absolute rubbish. If chess isn't fun, well, we're not playing chess. We're playing 5-0. That's the point. This is not chess. This is just entertainment. I'm trying to boost my ratings in the streamer scene. Sheverspieler did not come through. We thought he might play today to defend his title. Chestertainment. Are you a chest trainer? No, it's C H E S S, you know, like the game. How many times I explain that to people? It's always awkward. No, I do upper body training. How many like physical trainers like specialize in like chest training? It's chess. You know the game where you move the pieces around the board? <laughs> Don't make a long email address. Um, all right, Aldisto, Sparkle Horse, Sigur. Sigourney Weaver. Oh, I'll just so already. The only problem with this with this format is that we can't play each other more than once. We need enough players. Oh man, I can't play the so so the wing gambit. Ah, wing gambit hurts. I just avoid his his whole thing here. 
his spiel. This is just equal. So it's fine by me. Chast chastity. Draw. This move should be accompanied by a draw offer. I believe. We've already had a couple of occasions um, with positions akin to this. I'm going to try something a bit different. The knight there. Not sure if it's any good. You want to go Capa Blanca style? Capa what? -a? Capybara. Capybara. Are you more likely to win at chess if you're from Winchester? I had a student in Winchester at one point. Um, she was pretty good. But unfortunately, like most kids, she gave up chess probably to pursue real things. Um, no, I don't think it makes you better. My experience was that it was it was a neutral effect. Here, I was gonna play knight f4. From my experience, it, it didn't have a positive or negative effect. All right, but maybe it depends if you're from like Winchester in England or or in Massachusetts, New Winchester, the New World or the Old World. I don't know. That's a good pun, though. A Winchester, the, the snobby officer. Yeah, of course. I didn't think of him. Yeah, he played the old New England English style guy. He was like from Boston in the show too. It's a well-to-do district um, west of Boston. Well-to-do town. Northwest, I guess. I'm not, my, my geography isn't that, that great. Even though I lived in Massachusetts for a long time. Rarely left the city. I don't know about England, but Winchester was from the U.S. So take the pawn on b2 at your own risk, right? Maybe I can take it. Alisto is like Uber driver. He's like Uber drivers. Sort of not, I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, philosophical opposite he he doesn't like the castle he's not really orthodox i play poker badly and lady in black was lady in black here i thought lady in black was here and it was I played poker badly the whole time. Are you serious? Is that my imagination? I played poker badly looks like Lady in Black a little bit somehow. That's weird. I thought you were Lady in Black, and then I realized you were I played poker badly. He wants to. He wants to attack me wherever I put my king here. Well, it's like there's a Y and there's a B. I don't know. It's not really that close, though. <clears throat> Lots of the same letters and the same, and both are very long names. And she was here recently. It's funny though, every time I look at the screen, I think it's someone different. It's the same exact thing. I don't know, I have really bad brain fog today. 
I haven't been exercising enough, I guess. My vision seems all right. Though I do need glasses, probably. He's got a time advantage. Ooh, that's committal. That's a committal move. Committalment. You're making a committalment. I get it. Queen's Gambit style. Now this does like Magnus Carlsen, basically. He's turning into Magnus Carlsen. Wow. He's being Magnus Carlsen, being John Malkovich. This sucks, dude. I I've seen enough. My turn. I have E5. What? Oh my god. out for a draw he took the draw I survived I think he could have played f4 if he doesn't take on g6 I'm, I'm definitely in trouble he had a huge advantage but I don't know about the final position I thought f4 if nothing else oh apparently that's not good because I have some active move queen a3 he had to play knight c5 Ooh, I'm in big trouble. What if I had taken it? You bluffed me. No. No, it wasn't good. No, it was it was a bluff. I mean I saw this. Okay. Takes here. Queen H seven. Yeah. But I, I was afraid. You did like semi semi bluff me. Okay, this is far more complicated than I bargained for. I have to play king e7, and that's scary. Super scary. Yeah, no, I was in trouble. I'm happy with the draw there. 
All right. We 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 got him. We got him down on time. Are we both down to thirty seconds? Um. I like to offer draws in like tricky positions, when you know it's not clear what's going on. Um. Hide the rating points. For some reason, I've literally lost 200 Blitz rating points in the last week. Just play in Zen mode. Yeah, seriously. Hide the rating points. Good idea. Just turn on Zen mode. You wouldn't even think about the rating points. And don't like peek at your rating every game. You know, if you, if you play in Zen mode, just Play your whole session and, and don't even think about it. Don't, you know, it's not like, the point isn't to, like, check in between games, you know. I would say, like, you just play however long you're going to play, and then you, you can check, like, after. No, I wouldn't play unrated. You're going to get, like, better competition in rated. It's better for your game. So we have 24 players, it's enough for this 11 rounds, although a lot of people will probably drop out. I'm hoping we have enough players to do the 11 rounds. Sorry, Sheba Spiller didn't play. Camel Culture is lurking. He's lurking again. It's not too late to join, Camel. Acerbate likes my new quote. My favorite moment of the chess tournament is when I get in my car and I go home. That is the mark of a chess pro right there. Who says something like that. Only a true professional. Every moment of the chess tournament is sheer pain and agony. It's like being a doctor in an emergency room. As I would imagine it. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to be hard. It builds character. The 150 attack. Thank you, Mr. Coffee, for the gift of 1000 bits earlier. We appreciate that here. In Sajiville. Hmm. Not really down on my 150 attacks lately. This isn't really anything special. Nice. Oh, turning it into a kind of Benoni. I'm not sure about that. I have to say I'm a little skeptical of that. No Benoni arsenal? What do we say? What's the theory? No Benoni is a good Benoni? With Gary Benoni. Reference to a children's show when I was a kid. Oh, he tries E6 anyway. A real hardcore move. When I was in the school, they said I should double the pawns here, but I don't know. The chess school. Do you want to do this? It's unsound. The rustling bear became like a genius. 1700? Oh, I hung my G pawn. Wait, it wasn't the Muppet Show. Wait, what are you talking about? It was a children's show. Not the Muppet Show. Muppet Show's not for children. Damn. Gary Gnu, right? But it's not Fraggle Rock. What was the... Fraggle Rock was related to the Muppets, but what was this show? You're confusing it with Fraggle Rock. I never watched Fraggle Rock. I had a friend who did. That was also, uh, yeah, the Great Space Coaster. 
something like that. Gary Gnu. No Gnu is good Gnu's with Gary Gnu's. No Benoni is good Benoni. Same principle. Obviously, no news is good news. It's very deep. Very deep. Deep reference. Now we torture. You see, this is where chess... You know, I, I said earlier that I think it's misleading to claim that chess is fun. But I will, I will, I will admit that it's fun to sadistically torture your opponent. I mean, sometimes. Um, do you want to trade knights? I don't really want to trade knights here. <sighs> yeah. Shouldn't be Ruslan's strong suit. Tactical endings with Ruslan. Um, Gary Benoni. Damn, that's like engine number one move. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Good lord, man. I feel like Uncle Joe. Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Pancake House, I said. Damn, dude. Is this guy, like, playing a little better than 1700? Now he's got tactics. He has perverse tactics. Is this for real? Is this really happening? He's not 1705, man. That's not right. Why do I get these people that play like that, you know? Yesterday. Dude, he's finding every single move that's like perfect. Seriously? How could you be 1705 and play like that? That's a bit much, man. It's a bit much, Holmes. A little too good for 1700, this guy. He's playing like a master in this game. But it's not enough that he's playing like a master, he's also playing like virtually instantaneous moves. Yeah, he's playing like perfect moves. Who is playing this? This is like a 2300. At least 2150. The last 10 moves have been virtually perfect moves, one after another. I guess I just suck. It's 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 not a question of them being good. I just suck. All right. This is play I would expect from someone who's literally 2200. The speed and the strength of his play. 
is is very very strong. It was like with Repun on on Monday. I can't understand how you could be seventeen oh five and play games where you're like twenty three hundred. US TV show for kids in the in the like late seventies, early eighties. It's it's a reference to that. Always ask him all the important stuff. Holy shit. It was like he pre-saw my move. Pre-saw. The prequel to the saw. It's the pre-saw. He's doing it again, pre-moving. This was horrific. You see, that's why chess isn't fun. Is it fun to just sit around and like make bad moves? That's why I don't play Bullet. We just like degenerate into the worst game I ever saw at that point. He played really, really, really well between like move 15 and 35, and then just started hanging his pieces. That's why he's 1705. Every time he has a winning position against the master, with like 15 seconds left, he just drops everything. Moderator, how much are they paying you per hour? You, you anticipate, yeah, you anticipate what the other player is going to play, and you try to win a piece. Exactly. Delver Flips, thank for, thanks for subscribing. I went shopping. I heard in the... In the English ferries, they're paying like a dollar eighty nine, a pound eighty nine, or a euro eighty nine cents per hour, or something. Some foreign workers. There was a scandal. Under the EU, like the minimum wage is something like nine euros an hour. These British ferries are paying like two dollars an hour. For being a moderator, yeah. British news. BBC. Yeah, P and O. If you're like, if you're like from India or Pakistan, they're paying you like two two euros an hour or something. That's so perverse. Can you imagine living in the Western world and making two dollars an hour, trying to live on that, or something like that? I guess those guys don't really live in the UK. I don't know. Still, I just see these articles. And I'm like, what? Ninety four was played against me, Uber driver. That's a movie you would love. Rent is included. 
want to get a job as like a parking lot attendant. That could include my rent, right? Like you work overnight in a little, sh live in a little shack. You don't have to pay rent. What is this? You're not going to castle? How dare you not castle? <sighs> Yesterday I paid ten dollars. Well, the equivalent of $10 for a jar of peanut butter. Because there is no peanut butter in Hungary. And I could buy some kind of really bad, like, Dutch kind. That's I had it once and it was really bad. It was just horrible. For, like, the equivalent of $5. So I bought an American peanut butter. I paid $10 for, for a, a jar of peanut butter. That's, that's freaking unbelievable. Even in the US, it would only cost five. Mr. Coffee, how much is a jar of peanut butter at the supermarket? I mean, I realize like nuts are kind of expensive. They've probably gone up. But man, that seemed kind of harsh. Yeah, I figured like five bucks. I actually, yeah, I paid essentially a little more than ten dollars. Luxury item. Yeah, I guess you're not a big peanut butter guy. <clears throat> what is Uber Driver playing here? Man, I like this position. Like, I like it, but I don't know if I love it. I'm gonna have to calculate. Man. It looks like calculation will be necessary. Even Emmanuel Lasker would be grossed out though by this position. Lasker was often happy to like crawl around in the back two ranks. But man, this looks even a little bit much for him. The redundant knights. And the blocked in bishop on b7. But I could easily be like overextended. Not easily, but it's possible. Queen d8. Yeah, Uber Driver's a time slimer. Oh, another one move threat. Look at that. The master of the one move threat. Now out. Uber driver mastering the one move threat. Now out on Amazon eBooks. Is it a threat? Can you take on F4? I don't have anything there. That seems unfair. Can't believe it. All right. I'm surprised he didn't play. No, I'm not trash talking Lasker. I'm saying, I'm saying that Uber driver, Lasker didn't mind playing like really stodgy positions, but Uber driver was taking it too far. You know, Lasker would be offended by Black's position. That's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to trash talk Lasker. Lasker was much stronger than Uber Driver any day of the week. You 
You blocked your rook, haha. -ha. There's another tactic. What was my idea here? He's just doing nothing. Doing nothing well. Unbelievable. That's a brilliant move. I would never trash, I would never trash Lasker. I shouldn't say Lasker, it's actually more like Steinitz than Lasker. I shouldn't have even, I guess Lasker did play a little bit like that against Capablanca. But Steinitz would be more, more appropriate. I mean, obviously Lasker was a student of Steinitz, so it's clearly related, but But was Uber Driver a student of Steinitz? Oh my god. What's happening here? Uber driver is another picture child for my 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 endlessly like bitching and moaning about uh, about people not calculating. I have a friend who works for this company. That's uh, they do like business strategy, and he wants me to like come on his strategy class and talk about it um i was i'll probably go into a rant about how how people just refuse to to put you know their their maximum into things they're always on the surface all right alisto is looking pretty unstoppable i've got five Jeroen said he couldn't play, but he did. Flair is here with three and a half out of four. Wow, he hasn't been here in a long time. Or loser like didn't play last round. Yeah, Uber driver failure to calculate. Just calculate more, dude. Right. I mean, my my. I keep talking about my last game on Sunday. The guy's a decent blitz player. He's a candidate master. And and when I looked up his games, all I got was like tons of games in the title Tuesday. I was like, whatever, man, who cares? If you're if most of your games in the database are from title Tuesday, chances are you're not thinking too deeply. And that's what happened. The guy like missed like a simple like two move combination. It was just it was over. surface <clears throat> but I mean you know when you don't maximize your effort and you don't use all your time you're just playing fast and you're missing stuff you know the top bullet players can calculate a, a simple combination in point one seconds but they're missing a lot of shit you know like the thing is like both sides are missing a lot of stuff the, the main thing is speed you know both sides are going to make a lot of mistakes but you can't carry that over to to tournament chess you'll, you'll just be playing surface my opponent lost the 20 minutes on the clock i had 10 left you know i managed my time better what good is the fact that he had like 10 or 15 minutes extra when he when he like blundered a simple combination yeah a button pushing contest
I mean, we have been in a strange situation with the pandemic, and there wasn't a lot of over-the-board chess. Now we can get back to playing some serious over-the-board chess, but people have to learn how to play over-the-board chess. Long games. It's, it's a... You know, it's not easy, especially if you have, like, attention deficit. Which a lot of people seem to have. I used to get, like, anxiety attacks. Sometimes that made me, you know, unable to concentrate. Um, but if you can relax and concentrate, you don't have ADD, you're not having an anxiety attack or distracted in some way, you need to use all your time and, and calculate and work as hard as you can at the board. That's what, what serious chess is about. Sheroshevsky says, do not rush. That's the other thing, which I learned from my dad. He's big on not rushing. The first principle of endgame play, according to Sheroshevsky, do not rush. Yeah. I read books instead of watching YouTube videos. Chess is being dumbed down by by Bullet and, and YouTube. And and increasingly fast time controls, which I think are bad for the game. <clears throat> Bad for real, the real game. Maybe not for making money or marketing chess, but it's bad for chess itself as a game. The quality of the game declines. Flare, 1869. It was a good year. So he wasted a tempo with bishop b2, followed by bishop b5. Okay, that's totally random. I'm gonna use that tempo, you know, that time from that tempo to try to do something pretty, pretty aggro here. Agricultural. The bandit, the gambit bandit. Knight h6. Pawn to g6, knight f5. It's tempting. Really tempting. So objectively, what's my best move? Taking with the pawn or taking with the queen? Taking with the pieces is always safer. But I'm gonna go whole hog. It's really important, I think, you know, not giving him that e4 square. But you could definitely sack a pawn or, or take with the queen there. Yeah, this is very surface. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, surface, surface. Hey, let's threaten check in one move. Because you play too much bullet chess. Not, not trying to shame him, you know, but I'm using it as an instructive point. He's playing knight g5. He's not developing his pieces to play for this one move tactic. Maybe knight e5. Wait, that's a really bad position. I can do the same thing. A little different in my case. I am actually threatening to capture a piece here. It seems better. But I will have to watch out for that. Mm. D6. 
deep. I'm making fun of one move threats. <laughs> My one move threat is not so easy to meet. Not all one move threats are created equal. Right? Does anyone know a cure for brain fog? <sighs> Maybe I have long COVID. Maybe I'm just old. But it seems to come in and out. I guess there's just a lot of factors. Yeah, but the coffee just doesn't last long enough. The brain fog comes back. It, it's like the clouds come back like within an hour. I want a like permanent cure other than like killing myself. You probably have to exercise regularly and eat healthy. Ginkgo biloba, you mean? Ginkgo biloba, biloba. It's a it's a medicinal herb. Yeah, I, I gave that to my mom when she had Alzheimer's. But I think it's a little late at that point. You probably want to get, get on the program a little earlier. Well, it's probably like a very, very old herbal supplement essentially when's the bullet arena good a good idea delver this i thought this was this was not my first Honda blitz arena by the way as pointed out by shiver spieler we had a Honda 550 arena last year almost a year ago it was february I'm not sure the Ginkgo Below was not a total hoax, but I think it's overpromoted, Mr. Coffee. It probably has, you know, I, I would assume there are some scientific evidence um, to support it, has some positive effects. We trust Mr. Coffee normally. He's a little anti Ginkgo Biloba. We'll let it slide. He's entitled to his opinions on medicinal supplements. Yeah, basically, um, basically, my normal plan in these lines is to castle on the queen side but let's make sure nothing bad happens here. Uber driver had another winning position. He's a specialist in like losing winning positions. He's like a resident PhD in that, in that category. You took my exchange. Not very nice. But anyway, I've got an extra one. You can have it. You can have it. I'm feeling generous. Trying to open the position. The evil. A flare. Oh nine. He's not a resigner. Man, these people were pissing me off today. I played in an hourly arena and like against a 900 and another guy. They just will not resign. I'm like a thousand rating points, high, you know, a thousand five hundred rating points higher. I just have to resort to like letting my flag run down to like one second to checkmate them. 
even facing maiden one, they like sit there and they will not resign. I know that it's it's wrong, you know, but you gotta teach people the difference between right and wrong. You don't like play on when you're facing maiden one. Just resign and go to the next game. So I'll just punish them by like letting my clock run down to one second. Just when they think they're gonna win on time, I mate them. To just troll them, you know. Get their hopes up. Oh maybe he's disconnected. It's so mean, but I like being mean. And it makes a lasting impression, and maybe they won't do it anymore. Teaching them the hard way. It's like making like five queens or something. Though I always end up like stalemating when I do that. I've done it twice in recent history. The equivalent of slow rolling. Yeah, making multiple queens or, or letting the clock run down. I would never do it against a sportsmanlike opponent, ever. And I'm very, very, I'm very, very etiquette minded normally. But these people that are down like six pieces and they won't resign. What's the point of that? Why do you think you have a resign button? It's very prominent. It's like, it's right there. Why do you think that's there? If it's like a really cool mate, like, of course, even like the famous masters of the, the 19th century would like let each other mate them. If it's a beautiful, if it's a beautiful combination or something, of course. And I think in over the board chest, that's stylish. But I mean, when you're up like six pieces and they won't resign, I just like wait till I get to, to mate in one and just wait. See if they can figure out to resign. Would you? You guys hear the ambulance? We haven't had an ambulance now. The window's open. It's 60 degrees here in Budapest today. Our first, like, I think today was the first 60, well, Fahrenheit. You guys aren't used to Fahrenheit unless you're from the U.S. It happened to you in a classical tournament over the board a week ago. You had three pawns, a queen, and a bishop, and he had only a king and pawn. He spent 20 minutes thinking. You called the arbiter and asked for three queens. crazy I mean I don't think there's anything you can do technically officially but I mean if you're playing in a over the board tournament remember if you don't resign you're like costing yourself energy for the next round a lot of people I've seen make that mistake to waste their energy Once I saw Ar Arkel came here, and he's the classic guy, you know, for trying to grind people down in like 100 move endings. And I like him, he's all right. He's got a lot of opinions and stuff, and I don't agree with everything about him, but, but, but Keith is all right. But he like tried to grind down this kid, Sh Foolish Shimon, in like a 120 move game, and it was totally drawn. He just played it on and played it on and played it on. And I was kind of happy because Arkel lost, it was funny. He literally made the kid play like seven hours and then lost it. Yeah, it was pretty funny. He would not give the guy a draw, would not give the guy a draw. It was crazy and it went on and on and on and on and on. And he actually found a way to lose. But that's not what I was talking about. You know, you've got to try to grind people down. Um, but I was just talking about people that won't resign. They've got to learn. But you also, it's it's smart to conserve your energy. If you're playing an arena tournament or if you're playing over the board chess, there's no sense saving, there's no sense wasting your energy trying to save a totally, totally lost position when you should be like conserving energy for the next game. Especially in most tournaments are more than one game a day. Yeah, he does that every game. Well, he's a specialist in end games. Against me, he traded queens on like move eight, the one time we played. I didn't really realize what he was about at the time. I was happy to like trade queens and have an equal position after nine moves. Um, man, this reminds me of a game I had with Tony Miles where I was black actually. But I don't think I would have done that B6 like you did. I guess this is wrong. What I'm doing here is wrong. 
My brain fog. I'm sacking a pawn. Not really sound. I'll tell you, Mr. Crafty, when I was like... Well, I wasn't a scholastic player, but I did start when I was like 12. He has bishop takes f3. Sacked the pawn. It's unsound. Um, but I felt... I felt... I felt... And I've talked about it before. Even from my late teen years, I felt very, very drained um, playing two long tournament games per day. So even kids feel it. Um, Do you see a lot of people who just don't know better, though? The worst is when I have a super tough game. And I win or draw or whatever, and it's like a good result in the second. And then I have to play another game. Man, that's brutal. Oh, that's funny, Dr. Chance. You found you found an excuse to actually have more time to rest. Interesting. I'd never heard of that that sort of circumstance, but it, it kind of makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, I guess you're just exploiting the rules there a little bit. No, I mean, when you go to chess tournaments and you see kids, they're like playing football between rounds. I think like one of my first tournaments when I was a kid, we actually played soccer in between rounds. Maybe it was my first, literal first tournament. I never did the scholastic chess thing. I was always playing adult tournaments from the beginning. So, all right, we're gonna go for the big clamp for whatever it's worth. Well, if you're just playing for fun, you know. Also, a lot of people, I, I invest a lot of energy, and I always have. Not just now, like, always have. I invest a lot of energy. I burn a lot of cal calories when I play chess. I'm not sure that's the case with everyone, to be perfectly honest. Well, no, I'm sure it's not the case with most people. I, I, I know that I burn calories. I would be obese if I didn't, you know, probably. Bishop d4. Ah, he lost this guy. He had bishop d4. But not everyone exerts that much energy. Speaking of fun, if chess was fun, why would I burn so many calories at the board? All right. That's our theory of the day. Chess is not fun. Chess is not meant to be fun. It's meant, to, it's meant to be painful. I 
agonizing. And loving every minute of it. <clears throat> yeah, I think Dr. Tripchance is, is exaggerating slightly. He's been known to slightly exaggerate. He means ounces. <laughs> he's not, he's used to the metric system. Dr. Tripchance, do they use the metric system in Iran? I'm assuming they use the metric system, right? You're not exaggerating? Damn. Back to tournament. All right, we got Aldisto still playing. Aldisto playing Ruslan. Ruslan was tough against me. But Aldisto's up a rook. All right, yeah. Speaking of not resigning. Um, Uber driver, as always, with a tough game. Oh, Arsenal fan against Uber driver. Nice. Don't let him get away with it, Arsenal. Defend to the last. You can do it. Don't let him. Don't let him hold this. I mean, don't let him beat you. You can do it, man. This looks like a tough ending, actually. Kind of technical. I don't know. What's up with that protected passer on the A file? That's not a very common position. Man, Uberdar is going to flag Arsenal fan. That's sick. You're both fast, but I didn't think Uberdar was that much faster than Arsenal. That is a beer, man. I, I didn't have a beer in a couple days. I, uh, I was unable to go shopping on Tuesday. I'm drinking a beer in a wine glass, by the way. Um, it's a very large wine glass. Last Tuesday, Tuesday's my shopping day, and I couldn't go shopping last week, and I had no beer in the house. So I'm celebrating with a beer. Um, yeah, back to tournament. I loved, what? You don't know, but even today, whenever I play an online tournament, I finish a pack of smokes. Oh, wow. I quit back in 2010. Smoking made me nervous. I realized I'm very sensitive to stimulants, so it wasn't good for me. That's why I play so fast, so you don't get in time pressure. Well, to be fair, Uber Driver lost a couple of winning positions today against the top player, so. He's maybe on tilt. Angry tilt. Who cares? This is not chess, Arsenal. This is just for fun. 5-0 is not chess, bro. Don't worry about it. I'm just doing this to be inclusive and mix it up a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to play like... I don't even have a FIDE Blitz rating. I mean, to be honest. I've never played an official FIDE rated Blitz tournament. It's just such a waste of time. Rapid is one thing. I think Rapid can approach some kind of quality um, that makes it like worth it to play in. But I don't think I would waste my time playing a Blitz tournament. I used to like to play Blitz tournaments at our local club in Boston. But that was kind of a social thing. You know? I mean, I don't... That, that was different. This is weird. 
Alvalis. He's making this boulder work. What did I miss here? So I missed Knight takes e4, of course. I told Astrobate one time, I've told him a hundred times. You have to play Knight takes e4. Damn it, Astrobate, how many times did I tell you? This is like a good, but I don't know why I'm complaining. I mean, it's basically like not a, it's it's a St. George. It's like a St. George where his bishop's on kind of a bad square. <laughs> it's not that bad, I guess, sort of. Though his knight's not on d2. It's like a transition to a, a Russell Emo, practically. I mean, B5 is not such a useless move for me. Getting, um, I'm getting a little mentally. Wow, that's an interesting move. Rookie three. Wow. It's a nice move. Dude. And he's 1600? Here we go again. The 1600 stuff. This guy is not playing like a 1600. But I missed my chance to play knight takes e4. I don't get the 1600s who play like they're 2100. It's almost every time. Even this move is like a master level maneuver. I could accept maybe 1981, 1881 maybe, but like 1681, you're playing like God. Every time I play someone like 16, 17, 100, they play like they're 21 to 2200. Why is that? Doesn't seem like a 1600 to me, man. This is easily 2100 strength. Okay, I found his weakness. He just misses one move tactics. So I just take on d4. So that's his weakness. He's like really good strategically, but he's not calculating at all. He's just blundering his rook on the back rank. This guy could easily be 1900, 2000 with a minor tweak and improvement to his tactical play. That's really ridiculous. This is not even a good move, or is it? Viable. No, I mean, strategically, he played perfectly, and then he hung a rook. Like, what?
Yeah, Delver, especially like older players who don't take Blitz that seriously, they could easily be. <clears throat> yeah, you could get some guys who are older, older masters, former national masters, <coughs> who could hang out around 2000 in Blitz. The guy had a great position. I mean, that's crazy. I think he's just better after rookie one. Yeah, one plus one. One point one. One plus one. E five was a question mark. In the equal position. Engine doesn't like rookie one. What do you want him to play? Like Bishop G five, maybe? Yeah, he has this idea. Which looks kind of dangerous. Yeah, it's a classic hanging pawn. Maybe he has a4 also. He, he could play a4. But you know that's like a little a little less common than the players who, you know, are good tactically and bad strategically. El Prepador in third place. He's going for another third place against Uber Driver. Uber Driver. No, sorry, it's Ruslan. Uber Driver's playing as well. We still have rounds left to go. Wow, Ruslan's full piece up here. With less time. Ruslan's fast, too. Uber Driver? How did you lose so many games? Uber Driver's 4-4. Four He's like Mr. Draw, usually. So the sudden death time control brings out like the decisive games in Uber Driver. It's interesting. Uber Driver Goiju. Interesting. What is this? An English? Uber Driver playing the white side of the English? Asturbate, thank you for the gift sub to G Souts. Thank you, guys. Where's our viewers tonight? I like it. Oh, another thing, the pet peeve. Earlier, there were some streamers. They have stream titles like Titled Tuesday, and then they're streaming on Lee Chess. It's like, what are you doing? By the way, is that cool? You advertise Titled Tuesday on Cheese.com, and then you stream on Lee Chess? How gross is that? That's just wrong, man. You shouldn't be allowed to stream anymore on this site if you're, if you're like advertising Titled Tuesday tournaments. It's so bad. It's just grotesque. Man, Uber Driver's getting ripped apart here. Dissected. Wow, dude. Trash him, Goiju. Take him down. I might be slightly exaggerating, but it looks like Black's is just very active. Yeah, it's true True that actually it's not that clear. Oh, man. Speaking of one-move tactics, Uber Driver, he only misses one-move tactics when he's, like, totally winning <laughs> and up six pieces. Take the draw, Uber Driver. You might have a perpetual. Would you take the draw? Would you is probably worse, but I don't see. You know, he probably White has to find a subtle way to play for a win here. Queen H six check. I mean, White's up a piece, dude. You're you're probably winning, aren't you? Uber driver's such a chicken. I was just kidding about taking the draw. I admit it's not that easy, but I think you're winning, man. I mean, you're up a piece here. You have Queen F six. What a chicken. He takes the draw. Black has rook takes e3 check, okay? But I think that I think that queen f6 will handle it. I mean, black's down a rook, man. Well, queen f3 check. There is this thing here with queen f3. Is that anything? I can't believe that, that Uber Driver takes the draw. That might cost him third place. He's got to be winning. 
I was just kidding about the draw. Taking the draw. Wow, knight d2. Double exclam. He has a host of winning moves. Queen f6 isn't even on the list. Wow, that loses. Oh, there's a fork. Mommy. My, my suggestion is not a good idea. Rook takes e3. I saw that, but there's the fork there. So queen f6 is not an option. I'm not saying it was the easiest position in the world, but I'm definitely not taking the draw by rep there. Yeah, he might have rook d1. But isn't queen f3 a problem? There's nothing with rook e3 here, is there? Queen f3, king d2. I mean, he's playing a rook down on h8. What are you afraid of? I think Uber Driver just felt like he had no draws this tournament. He felt naked with no draws, so he took the draw. Trip chance? Oh no. What round is this? Seriously, what round is this? I don't even know. It should. Oh, round 9 should start soon. Round 10 will start soon. Round 10 started. I should do like a Uber driver. Oh, we've played this before, right? I don't think you played that before. You didn't play the semi Tarash before. You've been hanging out with Shiver Spieler. This doesn't suit your style, Dr. Chip Chance. Semi Tarash is for draw players. This so maybe Uber driver sh played this against me. This totally doesn't suit your style. You're too, you're too sharp for this. You have no business playing this opening. Oh man, did you guys see Hikaru get slaughtered today? That was awesome. I feel good for Aronian. He lost that match last time in, in Berlin the last time, the first Grand Prix. That tough final against Hikaru. Dude, he killed him. Did you see his time? Like... Aronian used no time because he had the whole thing like worked out like the entire opening Hikaru has like predictably played this kind of shaky variation of the QGA again and again and I think Aronian just had it like worked out millions of moves he used no time for the entire game at the end of the game he still had like an hour left or well almost and Hikaru just did not resign forever speaking of not resigning this is uh, Mihai Suba's secret move. No, I agree, Hikaru's overhyped. I would. I never expect him to become number two in the world, you know? Um, but. But, dude, like, nice job for Aronian to take him down. Last time in Berlin. I mean, Aronian, like, let him draw from a plus one position in their final match. And that was pretty gross, by the way. What the hell is this? Mihai Shuba? Well, I don't mind Hikaru. I mean, he was very, very bad when he was a kid. He was extremely arrogant and annoying when he was little. He got better, and when we were okay. You know, we're okay. Um, he's not as arrogant as he was. He, he's tolerable. I like him better than, than a lot of people, but but I just I like Aronian. You know, he's a good guy and I felt bad that he lost that final. So it was a nice kind of revenge. It's nothing personal against Hikaru. I mean it's just like I think Aronian is, is a more I don't know, I like I like him better as a player, honestly. He's he's more of a real chess player to me any day of the week than Hikaru. And and it's nice to see, you know, the better player win, in my opinion. Um, so bishop f6. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was a great game, though. That insane variation he plays in the QGA. It was a bad choice. I mean, he has to know that the Aronian would be, like, booked up to the gills. Aronian is... 
he's an awesome player. I mean, I'm so sad he never got a chance to play for the World Championship. But it's getting a little late now in the game for Aronian. He's like a senior citizen compared to the other guys. What's this Bishop F6? What the hell, man? What is this crap? I mean, I can't believe Dr. Trip Chance sits around, like, studying the... What the hell is this? Did I screw up or something? I don't understand. I never studied this. He was older and arguably less talented, Levant. What? Oh, Gelfan. Well, if you consider that a world championship. I kind of just skipped that. I like Gelfand. But it still didn't feel like... I don't know. Like a world championship to me. I like... I mean, they're both, not as great, but I was never a personal fan of his. I like Gelfand better. Gelfand is a is like a Rubenstein aficionado and his style is very very uh, I like Gelfand's style of play in his openings well it was like Arunian swindled himself last time he was clearly better and just gave Hikaru a draw by giving away all of his advantage I mean psychologically you know I don't know what the deal is with Aronian psychologically. He's massively, massively talented. But he just doesn't seem to hold it together at the critical... T in the, it seems like in, in the... Whenever he's in like a clutch situation, he just doesn't seem to come up with it. Maybe the pressure or something. He's not as good a pressure player. I don't know what the deal is. But in the big tournaments, he never comes through. In the candidates and stuff. Maybe this time. If 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 Aronian like dominates this tournament and qualifies for the candidates. Oh, he might qualify some other way as well. I don't I'm not even paying attention. So what's the deal with this? What is that? So what's the idea? Bishop d7? This is like some Suba analysis where white leg is up a pawn in an ending or something. I don't go that deep in this variation. I never played this. I only know it from Dynamic Chess Strategy, which is a great book. Um, but man, I mean, this variation is a little too tedious for me. White probably wins a pawn somewhere. Again, I think this is a very strange choice for Dr. Trip Chance. Who, you know, it's it's like a Schieberspieler style opening. Queen takes Bishop D7. That doesn't seem right. Queen D3. I'm not even not material. Rook takes Bishop A6. I'm up a pawn. Is that what I'm supposed to do? I guess. I just spent like a minute on this. I have no idea. I'm up a pawn. Congratulations, me. But it seems very drawish, to be perfectly honest.
Whatever happened to move 11? Oh, look at that move. He doesn't even attempt to keep the pawn. What? Yeah, that was that shouldn't happen. I almost went into another one of <laughs> another one of Move Eleven's favorite endings. If I play like Rook C eight, wouldn't that be funny? Can I like draw this position, please? Like, let's say he makes a random pawn move. So can I go here? Is this how oh, this is actually winning? Wow. Cause I, I get into this looks fine. Yeah, he has he has too I have too many waiting moves. That's funny. I was winning all the way. I thought he was gonna flag me. I don't know if it's a draw. I got kind of an ideal situation there with my rook, you know, lateral on on uh I think I, I don't know. I don't know, theoretically. It's five against four, too. It's not like four against three. It's a lot of pawns. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, Delver Flips, if you can con conclusively say it's a draw or not. Oh, move one. Yeah, that definitely. Asturbate just get the tier one sub to ST33. Wow, queen c4 was best after bishop f6. Damn, that was a, that was a weird position. Is that has that been played before move 11? Like I I never paid that much attention to that line. I just thought like black might not know it. Suba probably has a game in that position. There was a game like he mentioned um where Bernard Zuckerman played something with bishop f6. I don't remember. Schieberspieler would know it. So Astrid gave ST33 Brown a sub, and then I get paired with him in the next game. You have Bishop King C3. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that, that the variation is drawish. Wow, B4. I mean, the entire semi tarash is very drawish. This is an interesting move. B4 against B6. Polish. Defer. Nice. Nicely done. Nothing wrong with the Polish. Oh no. But that's that's gotta be a, a trap. He's falling for a subtle trap here. Asterby, thank you for the gift subs today. Thanks to everybody for playing. I think this is the last round. Though I haven't had time. I have not had time to follow closely where we're at in tournament standing because the rounds are too quick yeah white's in big trouble 
murder. So c5. Kill center. Yeah, we can look at that game if we have time after this game. Um, we can look at that opening, Dr. Trip Chance, if you'd like. Hang out for a minute after the stream ends. Um, <clears throat> that's the only, like, remotely theoretical opening I've had today. Pretty much. And one line that I really don't play. You just don't get the semi tariffs that often. I probably tried it against Sheber Spieler, but I don't remember what happened. I just don't know it well enough. You know, you've got to be like a technical expert to play that type of line with either side. I mean, Suba has a whole chapter in his book. It's a very long analysis um, on that on that game where he played that line. He basically invented it. He has a whole bunch of games with Rook B1. Although that idea has occurred in another variation too. They're playing it like a Grunfeld with Rook B1, which is a modern, another modern, even more modern line. But I don't think it suits your style. You're really good in very sharp dynamic openings. You know, I don't think you should play that safe, you know, that's leave that to Uber Driver and 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 Schieber Spieler. Semi Tarish is not not really your thing. I mean it's a very tough opening to play for a win with if it's possible at all. You know, you're you're basically playing for a draw when you play the semi tarish. What win? White's sort of solidified his opening um, experiment was pretty sketch, but he's um, he's managed to minimize the damage only upon down without further further problems. Now maybe we go we go for more. <clears throat> Pawn down, and I have a big center. He's a quick one, Mr. Grinch. I don't know, what am I doing here? D, D4, D, D. Oh, that's ugly. Ugly. Yugulali. Wow. He's a slow player. That's horrible strategically to take that structure, but if you can blockade it, I guess that might work. So ST33 is really fast. 1328 super fast he's faster than me well that's not very fast but damn dude you're, you're defending this like a genius the wrong pawn move had to play g4 it actually looks really hard to make progress after g4 That would be a nightmare. This is too much. You can't, you can't compete here. Objectively, I should probably play Rook F2, but I prepared this, this idea. Nice. 
Nice move. Wow. That's crazy. He's incredibly fast. Too fast. Incredibly fast, too fast. Gotta, gotta master the time management. We are coming. Has plan. Very nice. Alright, that's it for me, man. 11 games in one stream. I'm going to win on tie break. Wow, Aldis still hung in there. With 10 points out of 11 as well. Nice job. Undefeated. Uber driver with 6. El Prepador 5. Ruslan still playing. Ruslan could finish. Man, did you hear about Boris Becker? The guy, such, so sketchy. He filed for bankruptcy and he like hid all of his money. Uh, I remember um, playing in Berlin poker at the U European Poker Tour. I played at the same table in a tournament with his daughter. He was there. He was he was like a. He was a spokesperson for Poker Stars at one point. That was funny. Why am I talking about this again? I don't remember. All right, Ruslan Bear. Trophies, right? He was hiding all his trophies. That's what it was. Boris Becker hiding trophies. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, I don't think there's anything insane about him. He was just, like, trying to hide all his money after filing for bankruptcy. It's just shady. Maybe he lost all his money playing poker. I don't know. He wasn't bad, though. I got knocked out of a Poker Stars tournament once by him. I, I did something stupid. He's not a bad poker player for an amateur. Um, he, he was better than just an average celebrity. He's not a stupid guy. All right. What do we got? Tournament finished. Sparkle Horse first. Performance only 2456. 10 points. Alice still with 10. He's got 2434. Nice job. Two draws undefeated. I had a buy and a draw undefeated. I managed to take it on tiebreak despite that first round buy. You know, so nice job, me. I had a hand. I had a handicap and tie break. You felt like you had a plague in the brain. I had brain fog all day. Sparkle horse out of stow. Uber driver, good job, third place. You got your you got your draws in at the end. Doctor Chip Chance joined too late, and I managed to beat him. Wow. So he finishes fourth. El Prepador fifth. Arsenal fan missed a couple rounds. In sixth place, Ruslan played the whole tournament. Thanks for playing four and a half. Only a few of us played every round. Actually, I'm not among them. Only Aldisto, Uber Driver, it looks like Ruslan, probably Astrobate. ST33 snuck up. He snuck up, but look at that score. He got a forfeit win against Heroku. He beat Astrobate. He lost. He got a bye. And he snuck up by beating Avalis and played me in the last round. Sumaher missed a couple rounds, finished 9th, Flair 10th. We had a total of 25 players. Goju played every round. Astrobay played every round except for the bye. Al Avalis played every round. Thanks, you guys, to stay in the tournament. What I lacked in quality, I made up. I thought you said hacked. What I hacked in quality, I made up for in quantity. 
See, I'm trying to promote quality, Uber driver, not speed or quantity. But this tournament was, this tournament was about fun. Did we all have fun? I wanted to look at my game with Dr. Chip Chance because that was the only opening that had any significance at all. All right, I like how the engine gives you a dubious for D5. Oh man, okay, it was dubious, wait. You didn't play a proper move order. I mean, it's not dubious. That's taking it too far. This isn't, this isn't dubious, is it? No. That's crazy to call it dubious. Well, Gelfand lost twice against Arunyan with white here. That's insane. How the heck did, did Gelfand lose with white twice? It's really, really strange. It would have to be an ED, no? How do you lose with white in this? Yeah, okay, so the Suba variation, Rook B1. Okay, so this was the point, no. Suba was talking about Zuckerman played Bishop F6. There's a game from Helgi Olsen Tony Miles, 1986. I bet the Zuckerman game isn't even in here. You see, Suba versus Mardir Peterson, 1984. And Sabala played it the following year. I mean, that was definitely known and probably published in, like, Chess Informant. It was Suba's idea. And then later, Mihai Marin. Okay, many, many years later. So the first game was played in 1984. But there's probably, the, the Zuckerman game might even be older. Sure, Delver. That's what Repunj says every week. Gary Kasparov is getting arrested in Moscow right now. That was a report we had from one of our viewers last, like, two weeks ago. He got an article from, like, 2013 when, when Kasparov was, like, arrested with Pussy Riot. Oh, Arsenal doesn't care. I care a lot, Arsenal, but it's still interesting. Hmm. Well, you have to do something pretty bad to get banned on Twitch, man. Look at, like, Amaranth. She can be, like, almost naked and not get banned. It's not that easy to get banned as a streamer on Twitch. It's funny that that would happen, like, after his loss. He got brutally murdered by Aronian today. He was secretly handing off all the profits from a stream to a Russian shell company. <laughs> no, I don't know. All right, anyway, I'm not that interested to be honest either, but it's still soap, soap opera worthy news. Like normally I'm not interested in what Eric Hansen did today, but I think Hikaru getting banned is, is enough to pique my interest. Um, Rook B1. Well, anyway, that was Suba's thing, like, Bishop F6, he claimed, was the best move. Is it true? I mean, something seems kind of artificial about Bishop F6. But it looks like the engine kind of likes it. Zuckerman was a very strong player. He was, he was one of Fisher's, like, Blitz training partners. White well, just doesn't have anything according to the engine. Anyway, you have to consult Shuba's great book that's completely disorganized called Dynamic Chess Strategy if you want to learn more about this. I'm just curious about what happened. Okay, so C takes D4. Is that... That's not not the main line, but a very natural move. C takes D4, Knight takes D4. And you just did, like, the logical exchange. So we followed Suba Sabalo in 1984. And now you did Bishop F6.
sorry, what is that? Mr. Coffee, what? Broadcasting what? What is that? I don't even know what that is. Are we allowed to talk about it? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm losing interest. All right, Bishop F6. Yeah, so I played the best move after thinking for half an hour. I mean, it's possible this was in my brain like after reading that book, but I really didn't pay close attention. But I think by default, I looked at queen d3 for a while. It's like plausible to do queen d3. I'm surprised how few games there are here. I mean, it's, it's kind of logical play. So bishop f6, you're not supposed to do that. So you're not supposed to do knight takes d4. You should do knight takes c3. There's only one game here. Wow. No, I take it back. Wow. Well, this was Suba's whole idea. You know, he claimed that white was better here. Maybe he's right. CD4, 94. Okay, it's not interesting. I thought it might be something interesting. Hikaru had Karyaka in live. Alright, no, seriously. Um, after tilting from his loss against Aronian. So we're just good here. So as you said, you're supposed to play Queen A5 or something like that. That's I vaguely remember this now. Suba did like a massive analysis of this game. Like he was like Robert Hubner. A Robert a Hubnerian analysis of this position, which is actually pretty boring as far as chess positions go. So I, I actually played the right moves. This is a novelty. Wow. It's plus three for white? Are you serious? Yeah, at least it was something important. Right. He put his foot down for a really good good reason. Whatever. Yeah, I'm glad that we heard about it now. Arsenal was right. Okay, queen takes, rook takes. I played rook takes. So queen takes. Why is this such a big deal? So bishop d7. Queen a6. I figured I'm just going to like be up a pawn with a bad structure or something. The computer claims I'm plus three here. That's unbelievable. I mean, I don't know, my math is that I'm up one pawn, so that, that means I'm like plus 1.0. <laughs> I'm up an isolated pawn. But in Sockfish World, that's plus 3. Because it looks like a7 is, is shaking too. Wow. This is crazy. Yeah, you're in bad shape. Amazing. So this is a blunder. And now you have a real chance. Well, you don't have to trade trade queens. You could play that. Yeah, I don't see why you're trading queens necessarily. Okay, you're not necessarily trading queens. Here, queen a5 is a blunder. I thought about c4. I figured this is a draw. It should be a draw. But I didn't think c4 was a big deal. I figured this pawn is pretty weak, and I'm I'm on the border between a draw and a win. But I should I should have played c4. And now you can trade pawns. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised by that. I expected rook takes, because you're coming down here. I mean, aren't you, like, forking my pawns? <coughs> Basically, I expected 
is it is a draw, you know. Like queen takes, queen takes, or you have rook a three. So I think bishop takes was a blunder. Now rook a eight. What was that? What was up with rook a eight? I didn't see this. I have rook b one, rook b seven. Yeah, now it gets very tricky. And you left yourself pinned, so you have to do like rook a eight. So I had much better. I did this. I should play e3. Wow, bishop b6 wins a piece. How does that work? Wow, that's so sick. Yeah, that's sick. I have this move. I remember I lost to this guy, Mark Blofstein, like 10 years ago in a first Saturday GM. He had some kind of weird tactic in the ending to win a piece. Yeah, no, you should have just done rook takes c3. We both made some inaccuracies. But but the matter is theoretical. So it looks like you should do the do the Zuckerman. This is so counterintuitive. The engine's even looking at b6, which looks insanely dangerous. Wow. Suba lost against Ronan Harsvi V in 2002. That's unbelievable. He actually lost with white after b6. That's sick. Apparently e4. He misplayed it. So the Zuckerman stands. Bishop f6. Or h6. I, I remember this being mentioned, actually. Here's another game. Suba versus Vitaly Zaltzman, 1989. I don't remember if that game is mentioned in analysis. It looks like the computer agrees, though, this is best. Anyway, guys, interesting opening. So the tournament. Ponda 5 -0. tie for first, Sparkle Horse, Aldisto. I win on tie breaks with a crushing 24.56 performance rating. I'm even above my rating, I'm 24.47. Um, Aldisto second, and Uber Driver with an impressive 21.13. Sliming his way to third place. Nice job. Thanks, everybody. We'll be back for Weird Wednesday tomorrow, unusual opening stream. Thanks, Asprey, for the gift subs. We'll see you all. We'll see you all. Leader. I forgot to put Lee Chess in the title today. That's why there's no viewers. Why? Did you guys try to tell me that? I bet you guys tried to tell me like a hundred times, and I just didn't listen. Anyway, whatever. I forgot to put it on Lee Chess. We'll see you later.